announcement and so many things that in, in pre preparing for this I got a bit confused. Um, uh, so the, the, probably the biggest news that Google announced recently was that there's a new, a, a new sheriff in town um, and uh, his name is Larry Page. Um, so what's it like working you know, with Larry firmly in charge as opposed to that triumvirate approach that uh, you know, dominated Google for so many years for a decade? Oh, well, I think there's a lot of things that remain the same. I think especially uh, in building products, you know, we're still very focused on the user. A lot of that has remained very much the same. But I think the, the one thing that's been really good is I do think Larry's very focused on technology and on the products. And I think that this really brings those to the forefront. Where is the innovation coming from? What are we doing that's good for users? And there's always been a focus on that, but I think there's even now more, more intensity to that. Part of what Larry did, I guess, to sort of declare that he was in charge, or at least seemed that way, is that he he reorged the structure, uh, and there was some speculation that um, your role was diminished. Um, and I just wanted to lay that out and sort of shoot the elephant in the room uh, and, and ask, how do you feel about that? Uh, well, my role has remained pretty much unchanged uh, through the reorg. So uh, I worked on, I came in as, at Google as an engineer, worked as an engineer for two years, that spent 10 years. Uh, working on search, going from basically 0% market share to 72%. And then I made a big change last October to work on location because I just think there's something really exciting and special happening uh, here in terms of what the vision for the future could hold. But that's that has been a reasonably new transition for me, just four or five months. And so, uh, you know, I think we still, you know, we've released some good things, but we still need to, to prove ourselves. And so, you know, I really wasn't expecting there to be very many big changes in our area because the big changes for us are going to be focused on Before we dive into the location piece, I wanted to ask you about search, Luke, because there's more news about the search. Larry apparently decided to change the name of the search group to the knowledge group. Um, can you give us some insight, given your decade of experience with search, as to what that's all about? Sure. Well, I think that you know we think at Google around search as being really broad. Yes, it's one of our core products, but also the vision for where it can go is really expansive. And that said, for a lot of people, when they think of search, they think of the very apparatus they use today. There's a box, you type words in it, you get results back. And we did a lot over the recent years to really change that equation, bringing universal search so you can get all kinds of different types of results, uh, doing things like Google Instant so you could actually you know, get your results that much faster in a different way of interacting. But I think we still would like it to be more expansive. So I think one of the reasons that Larry retitled the search group is, you know, we still have a search group. It was kind of misunderstood that maybe we don't have a search group, which would be kind of crazy. Yeah, Google's getting out of the search <laughs> business. Uh, so we have kind a search like group. Kind of Microsoft getting out of the but, business. But it's been, it's been renamed knowledge because I think the idea is to reimagine search as something that's much more expansive, that's less about keywords into a box, and is more about how can you find and explore information. And we have this idea for a while of like, you are the creator, right? right? But it's not just about the words you put in, it is about your context and where you are, which is one of the things that I'm very excited about in location, because I spend a lot of time working on local maps, but looking forward, I imagine an entire suite of applications that I refer to as contextual discovery. Where you're not doing search, you're not putting terms, but based on where you are, a little bit of the context around you, can we do a much better job bringing you information proactively rather than having you ask for it? And I think that there's a lot that, that, can, that can, uh, can happen there, and I think that we wanted knowledge to reflect that potential. So one of the things that might contextually come to you based on your location as a answer to a query that you didn't necessarily make with intent, but rather with expectation, right? I'm here, I'm walking down the street, and up pops on my mobile device a Google offer. So can you tell us more about Google offers? Sure. Um, well, we aren't. We really don't have Google offers yet. It doesn't exist. It does not exist. Um, that said, it's we, all over the bar. <laughs> yeah. But it's the only yeah, place it's it is. My hands interesting. I was back back backstage. That said, we are looking at the offer space. We release, for example, the Etsy offer. So when you check in, you can now get deals in various locations. Uh, and we are interested in the offer space, and one of the things that you need to do as you're getting ready to potentially release offers, uh, uh, an offers product, is reaching out to businesses. Uh, so we have started that process in, 
in, few, in a few locations. Where we're reaching out to local merchants and trying to understand what offers they may want to, they may want to bring together. But I likened it uh, to, it's kind of like a movie, right? There was the part where you, where you cast the people, and of course you actually make the movie, and then you eventually release it. So we're kind of at that casting phase. We're trying to figure out, we're trying to figure out, like, you know, what, what, what would we offer, you know, what, what would actually be good users. With, with your uh, announcement this morning, you may have moved from pre-production to filming, because <laughs> you've got business photos now, and I can't imagine that if you, if someone asks Google in to take a picture of the interior of the business, as an opportunity for you to sign the business up for Google Offers, right? Uh, well, today, today that, was, that wasn't happening, but today we are doing the business photos where business owners have come, they've asked us, they invite us into their location, we go in, we take pictures, and we make it part of Google Maps as well as their place page. Um, Google famously uh, tried to buy Groupon. Um, how did that build buy exercise go? Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I'm not, I'm not really able to comment on acquisitions and speculation. There, so. <laughs> well, then, right out, you know, soon, shortly thereafter, here we have Google Offers. So obviously, you're serious about the space. Do you see it as, as strategic to, to your future? Well, we think that it's very that that, that offers loyalty offers um, as well as other types of offers are just good for users. They get uh, get a person a much better negotiated rate on something they're they're excited to do, and we think that the the level of personalization and and targeting uh, in terms of really making a user happy is something that's exciting. One of the values of, of being that close to the business is that you're gathering a ton of really interesting data that you can, at scale, and of course by removing personally identifiable information, start to see um, you know, patterns that allow you to create new products and services that are, as you say, good for the user. Um, but Apple and Google both found themselves in a bit of, you know, of a tempest last week and the week before when everyone woke up and realized that these phones have location data in them. Um, particularly senators woke up. Because and, 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 um, they tend to quote, there's something I can say that gets the attention. Um, what's, what's your view on the use of location data and uh, you know, how do you think customers feel about uh, being quote unquote tracked? Well, I think that location data is really, really useful. I mean, you look at things like our Panoramio photos, being able to have a geotagged piece of information, putting it on Google Earth, things like tweets are, are geolocated. Actually being able to use your phone which have, and, and actually create a piece of data that has some geo information in it is generally really useful because the context of, oh, well, this tweet you know, came from Los Angeles versus this tweet came from Pakistan actually is really, is, is really a fundamental piece of information. I think that right now there's a lot of confusion around what what different phones and what different operating systems do. Uh, and in the case of our Android system, we do opt-in. So it is, it's off by default. You have to turn it on uh, in terms of the, uh, the operating system that it ships. Uh, we offer notice and control. So as you turn it on, we tell you that you're turning this on uh, and you have the ability to turn it on. It's also important to recognize that the information that's transmitted back to, to Google is anonymized and only used in aggregate. So it can't be traced to a particular user. So there is no individual user tracking. So we don't have to worry about you know, either being tracked, that's not happening. And so I think that we now have a, a, a challenge around education, educating people around how this works. Um, because a lot of times this has to do with inter internal to a building, you'll be on uh, network location. And that is where we actually will use publicly or otherwise, if we were trying to connect to the cell towers, it uses too much power. But again, when you're turning on that Wi Fi location, it's opt in and you have notice and control over it. But uh, most people want to opt in because this, the value and the benefit of the service is, is so high. Now, in some of the coverage uh, in the Merck and the Journal, there was a famously quoted email. Uh, between Larry and another product manager said, you know, I can't overstate how important it is to have this location data. Now, one reason for that is certainly so you can provide services to the user. Another reason is so you can expand your revenue stream for location-specific advertising. Is that a 
fair thing to, to say? Well, I think that a lot of it has to do with the actual usage. Like for something like Google Maps, the ability to say, like, I'm right here, like, find me on the map and put that, you know, put the, put the dot where I am, or route me from my current location to the thing I just searched for. We, we can't do the current location piece without this location data. And you can just imagine how useful that is. Right? Compared to, say, on the, on the desktop, where sometimes you have to search for where you are, because the desktop doesn't have that kind of location. So uh, I just think it makes the product a lot easier to use. Yes, I think there's some revenue opportunities. Can you show me offers around me? Can you show me where I can go to save me and find something cool to do? Yes, I think that there is an element of that. But I do just think that part of what's great about the mobile phone is that you don't need to spend all this time specifying where you are. It has the machinery inside of it to know it. How important do you think the signal of location is going to be to Google's advertising business in the next five or ten years? As a percentage of revenues, can you take a, a wild guess? I think it's really hard to speculate because I also just think we have so many different streams of revenue that are growing really quickly. Uh, YouTube, display, right? There's, there's so many different types of advertising that we're doing. That said, I do think that location-based advertising and the advertising that are on our local products uh, are, is something that's going to be substantial. Local, you know, as this you know, conference in name and spirit, you know, sort of portends, is also what is Google's social strategy? Uh, our social strategy is to help users connect with each other. And we do that already a lot with things like Gmail, with things like Google Chat, and now we're also have been rolling out new functionality like plus one. So on search results, for example, you can plus one something. And that ultimately lets your friends know that this is something you want and you endorse. Uh, so we're just getting started in, in, in our social strategy. That said, in many ways, we already have a large social strategy. But we can see that, for example, on things like location, recommending businesses, restaurants that people like, all of those elements are really very social. And so tapping into these products that we have can give us insight, insight into social connections, things like social search, where we, we try to understand who's people from, who's people who are friends, and, uh, and, what, and actually service their content is something that I think is really exciting. Yeah. Um, can you imagine a time when I can take my Facebook social graph and hand it over to Google and say, do cool things with it? Um, well, I think that, you know, I think that that would be very interesting. I think that you know, we hit the first snag in that kind of vision uh, last year yeah. uh, when we looked at the overall, uh, when we looked at how people were importing different contacts. So, for example, a lot of, we had been all allowing automated upload of contacts from Gmail into Facebook, which we were really supportive of. We like to be open. But then we saw that the, the exact same reverse uh, import of contacts from Facebook uh, into, into Google or Gmail was prohibited. Uh, and so at that point we said, well, okay, that's, that's fine, but we still would like to be open. Let's, let's be open if there's reciprocity. So we you know, basically said, okay, we'll be open if this is reciprocated, and there was no reciprocation, which gives me some skepticism about You're still waiting for to pick up the phone over there at Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have time for one question. One one, one question, one or two questions from the audience. Over here. How do you plan to scale the business photos product? How do you plan to scale the business photos product? Uh, well, right now we are just getting started with it. So we'll officially put out the blog post on Monday. As said, we have several thousand businesses already that have invited us in and had us take the photos. Right now we want to get some experience with taking the photos, stitching them together, how much usage they get, the value is provided to the business owner. And I think that it's easy to imagine how to scale it, uh, especially given all the users all over who have, who have the ability to take photos. So if this is something that's useful, I think that it would be easy to imagine us calling upon members of the community to help us reach some of the hard to reach businesses uh, and doing it in a way that the business owners would still really like the overall process. Thank you, Marissa, for being here twice.